Hello everyone, welcome to this session. In today's session, I'm going to be talking about trigger bulkification. So let's just move forward and uh, let's have a look at the agenda for today. So we'll start off by discussing what trigger bulkification is, as in what does it mean to bulkify your code? And then we'll understand why code bulkification is necessary and how we can achieve it. And then moving forward, we'll talk about a scenario and we'll discuss how uh, we can achieve the bulkification of code in that particular scenario. And then at last, we'll discuss about the be best practices that should be followed while bulkifying the trigger. The first question is, what is trigger bulkification? So as it says here, if your code is written in such a way that it can process more than one record, in a single execution, that means your code is bulkified. But if your code can handle only one record or can process only one record per execution, that means your code is not bulkified. Okay. So let's just go ahead and understand this with a scenario. This particular scenario, I have written a trigger on account. Okay. Point number three, I have written a trigger on account where I have a before update logic, which will basically populate account description with every account update. Okay. So every time an account is updated, the description field of the account will be updated too. Okay. So now let's assume there is a requirement to, let's say, update thousand account records. Okay. So now surely nobody will go to each and every account record, right. And update them manually because it's, it's a large number, right. These are like, you know, thousand accounts. So obviously some kind of tool will be used to up update these thousand accounts in a single shot, right. So let's say you decide to use data loader. Now assume that the trigger logic that we have written on account, right? Just assume that it's not bulkified. So what will happen? We just discussed, right? That if your logic is not bulkified, then it will be only able to handle one record at a time, right? And it cannot handle multiple records. But what is our scenario over here? Our scenario is that we will try to update thousand records, thousand account records in a single shot. Okay. So one more point that triggers execute on batches of 200 records at a time. Okay. So now in this case, we have thousand account records and when we'll try to update those thousand account records using data loader, then they will be executed in a batch of 200 records at a time. Right. So now let's say the first batch of 200 records came in, but your trigger logic can handle only one record at a time because you have not bulkified it, right? So what will happen to these 200 records? Out of these 200 records, only one record, only the first record will get executed, will get processed and the rest 199 will not get processed because you have not bulkified your code. You have a non-bulkified code which can only handle one record at a time, okay? So the same thing will be happening with the other four batches of like, you know, thousand account records because thousand account records, that means like you know, there will be five batches of like, you know, 200 records each. So with every batch of 200 record, only one record will get processed because your code will be, because your code is not bulkified, right? So what we should do in such scenario, we should always, we should always write up, write our code in such a way that it is bulkified and it should be able to handle multiple records. Okay. So let's just go ahead and see how we can do it. So <clears throat> here is the non-bulkified trigger, right? So what am I doing here? I have this trigger on account. I'm checking the event that it is before update. And then if you remember trigger.new always returns you the list of S object records, right? What am I doing here is I am taking the first account record because it's a list, right? And I'm providing the index. I am taking the first account record and I'm updating the description. That means if you consider our scenario of 200 uh, records of the batch, right? So what will happen? Only first account record will get processed here. Only the account description of the first account record will get updated. The rest 199 will not get processed, right? And the similar thing will happen with the next 200 record, right? Which will come in another batch. Okay. So how we can bulkify it? Uh, we can basically iterate over this list because this is a list, right? This always returns you a list of S object records. So we can iterate over this list and then we can keep on updating the account description. So if we, if you see the bulkified code, then this is how it can be done. You always have to iterate over the list and then do whatever logic you want to perform. So this way you can 
bulkify your code now like you know whatever scenario we discussed we can be assured that all the thousand account records with every update the account description is going to get updated okay even though when we are trying to update the accounts using the data loader so let's have a look at some of the best practices that we should follow okay so one of them is that you should never write a sockel query inside a for loop otherwise you would end up uh, hitting the governance limits okay so consider the scenario that we were just discussing okay wherein we wanted to update 1000 account records using data loader so as we discussed that the trigger will take up records in a batch of 200 right every time so let's say if you have uh written a sockel query inside the for loop right so with the first 200 records of batch what will happen with every loop you are basically trying to make a sockel query right you are hitting the database so with that 200 records you will basically end up having 200 sockel queries right because your loop would be iterating for 200 times okay so what will happen the salesforce allows to have only 100 sockel queries inside like you know a loop inside a, in, in basically in a single transaction okay so you will end up getting an error something uh, called as too many sockel queries so that is the reason that you should never write a query inside the for loop you should always try to write the query outside the for loop and then you can basically iterate over that list of the query that you would be writing outside the loop okay so let me show you an example um let me uh, let's just go back to the trigger that we have written in some of the previous sessions okay so let's say this one okay this is one of the functions and we had some other functions we where we had written few queries but let's say uh, this one itself right so this is my for loop and here i have written a query but this query is not inside the for loop okay so here this query let's say if i write this query inside this for loop after this so what will happen let's say if this query is returning me 200 records okay so what will happen this loop will be iterated 200 times and every time this loop is iterated the moment it will enter the loop it's gonna make a query right to the database so 200 times right that means 200 sockel queries and it in a single transaction it's not allowed only 100 queries are allowed okay so that is why you should always write the query either outside the loop or you can write it over here as well but you should never write the sockel query inside the for loop okay so this is something very important and you should always follow it so let's just go ahead and um, check the second uh, thing okay so let's say so in our case we only had thousand account records right wherein we wanted to update the accounts but let's say if your data has like you know your data is very massive and let's say like you know if it's crossing 50000 record size then you should always go for a batch apex class rather than trying to get it done with the help of trigger okay otherwise you will hit the governance limit and you will not be able to process all the records okay the next one is that never perform a dml operation inside a for loop same similarly right similarly the way we have a limit for sockel queries we have a hundred limit right for a single transaction similarly we have a limit for dml operations as well and by dml operations i mean like you know insert update delete any kind of dml operation that you basically do so if i go back here so here right so basically this one so similarly right what we just discussed let's say if i don't write the delete operation over here but rather i write it inside this loop okay delete and then like you know opp then what will happen the same thing right let's say if i am getting like you know 200 records as part of this list then this loop is gonna iterate 200 times that means your dml operation will be done 200 times individually for each record right and you will end up crossing the limit for dml operations okay and per transaction it's only 150 dml operations limit that is allowed and you will end up getting some error like uh too many dml statements 151 something like that okay so that is why you should never write a dml statement inside a for loop otherwise your code will break and it, it's gonna just fail okay so every time what you, what you should do is that you collect your data inside a list in a list and then coming out of the loop perform any kind of dml operations whatever you want to perform okay so this is one of the other best practices 
the next one is that you should only fetch that data which is required right because a lot of people have that habit of let's say if i want to uh, update account description so i should only be querying account description right not like name phone description not everything whatever is required you should only fetch that okay and if you have a condition uh, using which you can filter the data right then that's for the best for example let's say um i want to check whether the phone number was updated or not right so i can always like you know whenever i'm querying the records i can put a where condition in my sokol query right so that will basically help in filtering out the data that will save you some processing time so you should always keep in mind right whatever is required you should query that and if you have a condition if you have a criteria and if you can put that criteria in your where clause then that is the best that you can do okay so um let's just go ahead and check a scenario that i have listed here so let's say in this particular scenario what i want to do is if i am updating the account i want to update the associated contacts description field so um one account can have multiple contacts right so let's say on one account if i am making any update so if that particular account has any related contact so what i want to do is i want to update the description field of those related contacts okay so let's just go ahead and see what i have here in the code which is like you know where like where i'm not following the best practices practices so but this code is bulkified because i'm iterating over the list okay but if you see here what am i doing i am querying the contacts and i have written uh, something like select id first name last name email from contact where account id is a dot this because i am iterating over this list right a dot id and then again i am trying to iterate over the contacts because i want to update the contact des description right but this particular code has a lot of issues correct because again if i am if we consider the same scenario let's say if there are 1000 accounts then what will happen like again like you know batch of 200 will run and what will happen i have a query inside the loop and i have dml statements inside the loop i am querying a lot of other fields which are not required right so if you basically optimize this code if you apply the best practices this is something how it's going to look so what i have done here first thing is i have taken out the query from the for loop so i am uh, querying on contacts okay and i'm querying id salutation because these are the fields that i'm using right i am querying only the fields that i'm using and if you see one more thing here here i was also um no this was this was fine okay so here what i did the i took the query outside the for loop okay that is the first thing that i did and i'm only querying the fields that is required right i am not querying anything extra i am not querying like phone field or like you know title anything extra that is not required in my logic right and then the other thing that i have done is i have that dml statement outside the for loop right so here if you see a difference i am not collecting the data in a list and then updating it you can also do it this way because this if you directly write update on the list right is going to update your like you know list so you don't have to create another list and then keep everything in the list and then update the list so this will also work so this one is like you know with the best practices i don't have any sokol query inside for loop i don't have any dml statements inside my for loop and i am only querying the required fields that i want for my logic okay so this was all about bulkifying your uh, apex trigger and some of the best practice practices that you can follow okay um in the next session we'll talk about what are the kind of errors that we can encounter in a trigger and how we can resolve them okay so till then stay tuned bye bye